Okay, I got 6.30, so we'll call this meeting to order if everybody would stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Adoption of agenda. It's recommended that the agenda of the April 14, 2022 regular meeting of the Board of School Trustees be approved as presented. Motion. Second. All in favor? Approval of minutes. It is recommended that the minutes of the March 10th, 2022 regular meeting of the Board of School Trustees be approved as presented. Motion. Second. All in favor? We have no one signed up for statements from the public. So we'll move right on to the administrative recommendations. Claims, it is recommended that the prepaid and April claims numbered 3873 through, through 3973 and 22064 through 22079 be approved as presented. Motion. Second. All in favor? Personnel. <clears throat> I'm locked up here. It's recommended that the resignation of Jason Good as the girls' varsity basketball coach at Fountain Central Junior Senior High School be approved as presented. Jason very much enjoys coaching basketball, but with sixth grade moving over to um, Fountain Central next year, Jason is also the person that oversees discipline for our junior high, as well as the athletic director. And um, with 90 additional students coming over there, um, when he and I talked, we just decided it's probably one person can only do so much. So as much as he loves basketball and he'll still be there because of athletic director, he's stepping back from the coaching role like that. Motion. Second. All in favor? It's recommended that Joni Sarver be employed as a long-term sub for an instructional aide at Southeast Fountain Elementary School for the remainder of the 2021-2022 school year. So Joni will be taking Noe Gonzalez's place in the sixth grade um, level wing. Joni has sub for us before and has also done a long-term sub um, in second grade last year. So. While she is licensed as a nurse, Joni is currently starting her transition to teaching because she feels like she would like to be in elementary education. So she's starting that along with finishing the year with us in sixth grade. Motion. Josh, motion. Second. All in favor? It's recommended that Kim Dotson be employed as a substitute for a maternity leave at Fountain Central Junior Senior High School. Um, as you may know, Kim was with us last year as our fax teacher. She came on really late and filled a need and did a tremendous job for us. Um, she has done some substituting for us this year and um, we were, it was a sigh of relief to be able to get her to come in and cover for Emily Peterson in a, in a challenging role. Okay. Motion. Second. All in favor? It is recommended that Henry Schmidt be employed as a science teacher at Fountain Central Junior Senior High School for the 2022-2023 school year. Henry comes to us from Danville High School, um, Indiana native, has had a long time goal of getting into a more rural um, and smaller community. He's filling a very hard to fill role for us, so we were very fortunate to get him as an early applicant, and we are excited for him to be joining us in our upper level science courses this coming year. Motion. Second. All in favor? It is recommended that Sammy Carr be employed as the girls basketball coach at Fountain Central Junior Senior High School for the 2022-2023 school year. 
Um, Coach Carr has had success in both the boys and girls arenas. I believe it was at North Vermillion. Um, he is retiring from teaching. So in addition to, to getting a quality coach, we've got someone who's also willing to be a substitute teacher for us next year, which is always good. So we're, we're excited about that as well. Great. And Motion. Angie has requested that we also, you know, urge him to want to be a bus driver since our former girls coach yes. is a bus driver. <laughs> so we're going to work on that. <laughs> Motion. Second. All in favor? <laughs> It is reg uh, recommended that the resignation of Lacey Ford as a teacher at Southeast Fountain Elementary be approved as presented. Um, you know, it, she's she has a young child, baby at home, and um, has been out of college for a couple of years. She is on an emergency permit at this point, and Indiana will not allow emergency permits for a teacher of record next year. And she just decided at this time with the change in Indiana's requirements and things like that, she just wanted to step away from the classroom right now. Motion. Second. All in favor. It is recommended that Mary Frazee be employed as a teacher in the special education department at Southeast Fountain Elementary for the 2022-2023 school year. Mary has been in Southeast Fountain School District since she was in third grade. Um, she's never wanted to go anywhere else and she has no desire to go anywhere else. So she is currently this week finishing up her student teaching and she will be licensed in both general ed and special education and knowing that we were going to have um, some needs to fill in our special ed, especially with Indiana's new law. Um, you know, I'm excited to be able to invite Mary to that next step. She's been serving as an instructional assistant, and so we're really excited. And Kelly, do you want to add anything about Mary? Nope, like I said, I agree with you. I think we're excited to add her in this capacity, and it's a natural next step for her, and I think she'll do a wonderful job. And she likes to coach. <laughs> Maybe drive a bus. Maybe drive a bus. <laughs> Lindsay's working on her to how to say the word no, so I did not. <laughs> I'll make a motion. Second. All in favor? It's recommended that the amended maternity leave request from Katie Clark be approved as presented. <clears throat> motion. Second. All in favor? It is recommended that the resignation of Amber Edwards as a long-term sub in the Special Education Department at Southeast Fountain Elementary be approved as presented. Motion. Second. All in favor? Moving on to quotes. Uh, a motion was made that the quote from Alley Electrical LLC in the amount of $12,180.78 to install new LED lighting in the gyms and cafeteria at Fountain Central Junior Senior High School be approved as presented. Last month you tabled this and um, the next quote because included in that, number one, one of the quotes, the company had made an error on it and we got the change too late to put it on the agenda. But number two, one of the recommendations were lighting in the pool area but because we know there needs to be some extensive work in the ceiling area, it did not make sense to put new LED lighting in there to take it back down in a year or two and then reinstall it again. So that has been removed from this quote. Motion. Second. All in favor? The motion was made that the quote from Kirby Risk in the amount of $44,315.14 to purchase new LED lighting in the gyms and cafeteria at Fountain Central Junior Senior High School be approved as presented. I'll make a motion. Second. All in favor? 
A motion was made that the quote from Indiana Wire Products incorporated in the amount of $17,693 to purchase materials for an athletic storage cage at Fountain Central Junior Senior High School be approved as presented. So we, um, we have a new golf simulator that um, was purchased and we have been looking for a place for it and determined that behind the bleachers up at the top, there is a room for that, but it's going to require some of those athletic cages that need to be moved and repaired anyway. Um, doing this at the same time we're doing the installing that simulator just makes sense so that, kind of like the pool thing, so that we don't do something and then undo it and do it again. And those cages have to be repaired for them too. Yeah. Okay. Second. All favor? A motion was made at the quote from Bloom in the amount of $50,634.40 to purchase flat screen, clever touch TVs, and rolling carts be approved as presented. Um, Quinn, our IT director, has a whole plan of how many we upgrade each year so that we don't end up doing everything at once. So this is this year's plan, but some of that is coming from, we have um, ARP money that is specifically for special ed needs. So for example, um, the pre-K ARP money will help to fund one of these in Donna Sillery's class that teaches the pre-K speech and, and things like that. So some of the money is coming from those funds, some is coming from our ESSER funds, and some from our technology funds that's built into this year's budget. So we've got a few funding sources for this. Motion. Second. All in favor. A motion was made that the quote from Worthington Direct in the amount of $29,896.70 for new storage in the band room at Fountain Central Junior High School be approved as presented. Um, not unlike the athletic cages, our band instrument cages are very rusted and old and likely have been here since that building was built and um, very much in need of replacement. So. Um, we did get different quotes, and this was the best price quote that we got, and appears to be good quality. Motion. Second. All in favor? Math textbook adoption. A motion was made at the quote from, how do you say that, Houghton, Houghton Mifflin Harcourt, in the amount of $89,604. 45 cents to purchase new math curriculum for the elementary school be approved as presented. Um, Josh or Lindsay, do either of you want to say anything about the elementary math? Because you were on the committee. I mean, sure. You were I mean, we went through an extensive process that has taken <laughs> most of the year to um, get samples early in teachers' hands. They were went through them. We had um, our team went to see presentations, as well as we had presenters from the companies come um, from our top choices came to campus and did presentations and our um, staff voted um, and this was top choice. Motion. Second. All in favor. A motion was made that the quote from McGraw Hill in the amount of $72,790.90 to purchase new math curriculum for the junior senior high school be approved as presented. Same thing, different building. <laughs> <laughs> motion. Second. All in favor? Twenty twenty two twenty twenty three textbook fees. It's recommended that the twenty twenty two twenty twenty three elementary textbook fees be approved as presented. Do you want to comment on those? Because you're saving money. Yeah. So, um, in addition to the textbook adoption this year, um, we thought it was would be helpful to at this time also um, 
give the fees for both buildings. Um, we worked um, to try to cut down uh, the cost for families as much as we could um, with the adoption of our new curriculum that we think will can take the place of some of the, the pieces we've used in the past, which allowed us to um, eliminate a couple of things, but mostly we found other ways to fund some of the uh, materials that our students do need. Uh, and by finding those other funding sources, we were able to cut down those fees for families. So Some of them were even cheaper than um, 2016, 2017 school years. So that's great. You know, 15, 20 bucks per grade, it looks like. Good job. Motion. Yeah. Second. All in favor? It's recommended that the 2022-2023 high school textbook fees be approved as presented. Motion. Second. All in favor? Other business? Um, no payment. Yeah, that's where we're at. I meant to talk about this a little bit before you read the recommendation. Um, we are part of a cooperative for our special ed services and our CTE services. Um, with, we're part of seven districts that are in a cooperative for North schools that share special ed programs. Currently, the life skills program, both the pre-K and the K-5 program are housed at Attica. Attica is building on to their junior, senior high and moving their elementary there. And so in two years, the program was supposed to be leaving Attica because they purposely chose not to um, include space for those programs. So the co-op has known that in the 2023-24 um, school year, those, there need to be a change. And then during spring break, um, the teachers of those two programs at Attica both let Attica District know that they're not returning in the fall. One is gone already and the other one is going to another district. So Attica informed the governing board, which is the co-op, that they've decided they're not going to do the program next year, which means each of the districts will get our own life skills and pre-K students back if no one would take the programs. Um, Covington School Corporation School Board on Monday night voted and approved to take the pre-K program. So, but they only have room for one. They don't have room for the K-5 program. Um, MSD Warren, the fourth school, also does not have room for the program. And that leaves us. We are definitely going to get our five students back, um, no matter what happens. Um, but I am going to recommend to you that you consider taking the whole program and for a number of reasons. Number one, um, if we're going to have to have a teacher regardless. We're going to have to have the space, the materials, the curriculum, all of that. If we only take our own students, then we have to come up with how we're going to pay for the teacher and the aides and the materials, the curriculum, all of the supplies. If we take the cooperative program, everything that has been funded through the co-op thus far goes with that program. And every district in the co-op um, contributes an equitable share based on the number of kids towards the cost of the program, um, materials, staffing, all of those kind of things. So my recommendation to you is if we are going to have at least five kids, there are 15 in the program, it makes more sense to take the 15 in the program and let the other districts help pay for everything, plus a lot of that stuff that we have helped purchase over the years would automatically come to our district. This is, you know, I know there was a lot of um, rumor back when we were looking at sixth grade that we were moving sixth grade to make the program. I want to make it abundantly clear. 
This was not on my radar when we talked about sixth grade. This wasn't even a consideration. And in fact, this program was not even going to be moving this year. So this has nothing to do with sixth grade. And, um, you know, I don't want any of you to think that was an ulterior motive at any time. It never was. And were it not for the fact that Attica just lost both of those teachers, it would not be something that I would be bringing before you right now. I make a motion that we accept. Second. Uh, actually, I don't think you read the whole oh. Oh. Yeah, I need to read first. Sorry. It is recommended that the Southeast Fountain School Corporation host the K-5, K-5 Life Skills Program for the WRSSC beginning in August of 2022. Motion. Second. All in favor? It is recommended that the STEM acceleration grant from the IDOE in the amount of $23,500 be approved as presented. Lindsay, will you please tell them a little bit about that? Yes, yeah, so a um, couple of pieces kind of fell nicely into place right about the time that um, it was starting to be determined that we would be adding the STEM class as an activity class at the elementary um, for all of the K-5 students. The Indiana Department of Education released this competitive grant opportunity for school districts to um, purchase curricular materials for STEM, uh, but also to kind of build a STEM vision. So we started looking at uh, Mr. Turner uh, offers Project Lead the Way courses at the high school. So we thought it made sense to go with Project Lead the Way curriculum for not only the new STEM class that we will have uh, for K-5 students, but also our junior high students. Currently, Lucas Deal teaches a STEM class, but we're going to incorporate Project Lead the Way for his classes as well. So we will go um, K-12 to for Project Lead the Way using these funds. Um, two kind of interesting pieces through the grant were they wanted some community partnerships. So. Uh, when is going to come out and put a fairly advanced weather station on our campus, which will not only tie in our STEM classes, but also our um, science classes and our ag department. And it's cool because when collects that data and shares it with local farmers as well. So um, kind of a neat community piece there. Our other um, community partner with this is Purdue Extension. They are going to um, come out and provide regularly um, some STEM career education for our students, as well as uh, working with the summer parks program at Petersburg to bring some STEM stuff um, starting this summer. So, awesome. Good deal. A lot involved there. Motion. Second. All favor? It is recommended that the amendment to the enrollment process for the Southeast Fountain Virtual Academy be approved as presented. So last year we approved the Virtual Academy and um, the State Department of Education also had to approve the parameters. We knew that there would be some bumps and figuring some things out as we went and um, one of the things that we figured out was we need to make sure it's in aligned with our enrollment process for Fountain Central. For example, there's a cutoff date when you can enroll um, in special programs, things like that, in our current board policy, September 1st, for, for example, for an out-of-district student, and it's because of how it works for school funding, ADM, and as you know, this program is only funded at 85%. So I think that we need to use that same date. One of the things we ran into this year um, were students deciding mid-year they were ready to stay home. You know, they were remembering fondly, apparently, their days of COVID and thinking they should just get to switch to the virtual academy. And we're not going to do that. We're not going to go in and out of that with this. We also, you know, the agreement with the board and with the state was having um, <clears throat> an application so that we made sure that if we did enroll students in that program, they were students that 
would be successful. If they are not successful in the program, they're not doing any work, there's no accountability, then clearly, you know, that's not the best fit for them and we want them to come back to Fountain Central and not continue as virtual students at the end of whatever semester they're in. And um, so, you know, putting that more in writing and getting the signature on it, it's, it's really not anything that you hadn't really approved initially. It's just tightening it up a little bit. And um, I worked with our virtual academy director as well as our um, guidance director on developing this and further developing after we saw the bumps that in the road that we hit this year. So it's been a good program. We just want to keep making it better. Motion. Second. All in favor? Elementary report. We did receive our spring I read three results for our third grade students who take that assessment. We had an 83% pass rate in our students. Um, just to do some comparison with that, last year we were at a 77% pass rate, which we know those students were coming off of a partial year from COVID. Um, the year before we did not take it due to COVID, but looking at pre-COVID scores in our spring of 2019, we were at 82. So we have surpassed that rate by a percentage point of the past four years. So we think that's really great. Um, I know you know some of those learning lags and gaps that have happened through the pandemic are real concerns. I'm really proud of our staff and students for showing that they are starting to overcome those. We want to thank the Indiana Farm Bureau and Purdue Extension for hosting Ag Day and Safety Day, which is to come. Our fourth graders attend Ag Day, our third graders Safety Day at the fairgrounds here in Fountain County. Um, so they really enjoy those free events that they're hosting for the Fountain County Schools. We also want to thank Emily Watson, the junior high teachers, for hosting all of our fifth and sixth grade teacher, students this year. Um, we know those were big groups to come over, but they got to visit classrooms, see a transition time, practice opening lockers, um, go to lunch. Um, all of our students were very excited and it helps to calm some of those jitters that they have going over. So we appreciate those staff members organizing that. Um, we just want to remind everyone that I Learn begins um, on Monday, April 18th. So it's this coming Monday. It'll last for about two weeks for our students in grades at three through six. Um, our parents can provide with those schedules. Kindergarten Roundup is on April 20th. Um, that is something that parents need to sign up for so they can have a time slot. So if you know any students who will be five by August 1st, um, they are eligible for kindergarten at SCFE in the fall. And then lastly, just a reminder, SCFE's 50th anniversary um, is next Sunday, April 24th. So we invite everyone to our open house from 1 to 4 p.m. Um, we're pretty proud of our building, so we're, we're going to show it off. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. High school report. So um, we don't have our students here to provide a report, so I'm going to give a little hybrid report here. Um, as Mrs. Morgan mentioned, it is testing season, so um, our junior high students will be participating in the iLearn um, for math and ELA the week of April 18th, or beginning the week of April 18th. Um, we also have ninth grade biology students that will be taking their biology iLearn state assessment in late April, early May. And then our advanced placement testing begins in the beginning of May, so it's testing time. Um, something that we are looking forward to that is coming up is the FC Fine Arts Festival. That is April 22nd from 6 to 8 in the high school cafetorium and main gym. Lots of good things going on this year. The program is taking a step forward, um, beginning in advanced artist displays, paintings, drawings, and ceramics. Um, there is a silent auction for some of those ceramic works, including hand-painted mugs. I believe for the first time, our, actually our FC welding department is contributing some artwork that's going to be on display, which is really cool. Um, there's also displays from our family and consumer science classes. I was sitting in an eighth grade facts class where they were sewing a quilt to, to be displayed there. Um, our bands, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, as well as high school bands will, will be performing. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, choir. 7th and 8th grade as well as high school, the Mustang Singers from uh, Mrs. Morgan's building. Um, and then there is also a, a fundraiser that is a part of this. 
I believe four or five staff members are getting entered into a karaoke contest, and you can <laughs> contribute cash. Yeah, I'm one of them. Are you making a million? No. Jars of jars, and you can contribute cash to who has to perform. So I just know that I am going to bring a lot of money and make sure that someone else wins. <laughs> So Ms. McCarty, Mrs. Brown, and Ms. Pate are putting this together. Um, at the end of the end of the year coming, we've got prom May 6 at the Beef House. Looking forward to a great night there. Um, academic Super Bowl at Attica on April 19th. Um, have some individual students, student athletes that made all area teams during the winter season. Will Harmon, first team all area boys basketball. Jersey Hirschberger, first team all area girls basketball. Larissa Bauer, second team. Um, Olivia Malady was a first team all area swimmer. Noah Fruits, Riley Nelson, and Chase Whitsman were all first team all area in boys swim. April 27th, we have an FC family night, which is something that we do regularly throughout the year at 6 p.m. Um, Mr. Wolf takes a ton of time to prepare this and we're doing something for um, what I believe is the first time or the first time in recent uh, years. Features a staff versus student volleyball and basketball game, trivia and, and more. Mr. Wolf's done a great job of getting people excited about that. It's uh, going to be somewhat competitive but more lighthearted and just be a good time. Um, again, that's April 27th at 6 p.m. Finally, what I'd like to just briefly mention is the transition process that we're going through over in our building and, and the progress that we're making. Um, you know, we, we keep coining it as sixth grade transition, and it's certainly that, but when you transition sixth grade, it becomes transition for the entire building because you are um, figuring out how you can utilize your staff to meet the needs of all students in different ways. Um, and you know it, it's been a challenge and when we brought this up it, it seemed daunting at this point I, I certainly feel comfortable with where we're at there's a lot of work left to be done um, but we're in a good spot I want to just give some kudos to those who are, are leading this and then jumping right in um, Mr. Davenport did a great job of, of configuring our building to address one of the major concerns of, of our parent population, which was trying to do our best to keep our junior high students more centrally located in one area as opposed to our um, high school students. And while that could never be perfect based on the layout of our building, as well as the staff um, <coughs> teaching at multiple levels, you know, I'm confident that that goal was achieved in a very good way. Um, it, it was challenging, but if the goal was to do that, um, Mr. Davenport did a great job with that. In terms of contributing to our master schedule, um, Mrs. Good has done a, has jumped in and, and rolled up her sleeves. Mrs. Foxworthy has put forth a tremendous amount of work. Our custodians and our maintenance staff is preparing for all the things that are going on. Um, Mrs. Hammond spent a great deal of time pouring over all of the requests for materials and equipment that is going to be needed by all of our staff member and to work within our budget which is was a great learning experience for me to see how that works um, to get everything that we need for next year mr mccrory is working hard to make sure our technological needs are met um, and then i've kind of just dabbled and assisted and provided some support in, in the areas, you know, with, with that whole team. But it's really been a, 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 a stressful at time process. But like I said, everybody's rolled their sleeves up. Um, we're in a good spot. We're going to get it done. And it's really going to benefit our students, which is always the number one goal. So very pleased right now. Great. Thank you. And Mr. Shaver won't pat himself on the back. Uh, yeah. he's, he's, yeah. he's not taking enough credit. I mean, he's doing he's he's really good. Good. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's not taking quite enough credit. A lot credit. of good stuff, yeah. Well, thank okay. you, guys. So we do not have a student report, so we'll skip straight to the spotlight with. Yeah. I'm invited Leah Barrett from Proactive MD to be here tonight to share about um, Proactive. That is the clinic that is staff members who take our insurance have access to the clinic so 
Welcome, Leah. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Leah Barrett, like she mentioned. Um, I'm the client relations manager, so I work really closely with um, Dr. Grimes and Chelsea um, on the relationship between um, the care team over there and then what we want to offer here. So I do have a presentation today. Um, it's a pretty short one, and then I'm just going to kind of talk over where we're at. Let's see here. You may have to relaunch the presentation. Okay. It timed out. Okay. So, um, for some of you guys that don't know, of course it's right down the street. Um, if you cross over the intersection, we're right down the street. Um, and so, what we do at um, Proactive is we really want for this to be a different experience when you walk in. Um, so, mostly what we do is primary care, and that's really what when individuals are walking into our door, we want them to feel welcomed. Um, I went out earlier after I met with our friends this afternoon, and. It was just really inspiring to see them walk in. They knew every patient by name. Um, they knew about their kids, you know, and that's what you want to feel when you walk in to talk to your doctor um, and even the care team around them. So, um, some little about us. So we are based in Greenville, South Carolina, um, but the majority here in Indiana. So we have over 60 health centers here in Indiana, um, and we work with a lot of um, school entities, government entities. Um, but as you can see. We um, total over 100K um, total lives that we are working with and we're continuously growing. And I think the fun thing is, is we work with um, small groups like Southeast, um, which we really value because you guys truly, this is a great benefit that's offered to the employees, um, like a phenomenal benefit. And so being able to offer this to your guys' employees is a phenomenal thing. Um, and we love to be here. Um, I'm gonna let this video kind of just show what the experience is like when you walk in one of our health centers. If I can. Sorry. Um, I don't know if it's going to. Or maybe because it doesn't like going on the screen. Let's see if um, you can drag it you know, from this little bar. This bar? Yeah. Let's see if it'll go. Right for tech support. Oh, sorry. Yeah, because I'm not tech savvy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, PowerPoint's presentation's always a little bit of a we'll load yeah. some stuff up now. There you go. There you go. Perfect. Hopefully we have sound. where we are only and always about the patient, and we promise to always fight for your greatest good. Whether you are within or beyond our walls, we are committed to ensuring this experience is nothing short of excellent. Healthcare is personal, and we all experience it in a unique way. From the very beginning, we hope you'll feel like you are receiving the best care experience of your life. Scheduling is quick and seamless, whether you make a phone call to the health center, or communicate online through the patient portal. When you come in for your appointment, you will be our welcomed guest and will soon feel right at home. We know that every minute counts, so we want your time at the health center to be spent on wellness and not waiting. You'll have plenty of time with your provider so you can build a trusting relationship. We will communicate quickly and continuously throughout your visit, so you'll never feel like you're getting lost in the shuffle. While you're receiving care, we want you to be comfortable. The health center is designed to be a safe space conducive to physical, mental, and emotional healing. When it comes to your health care, your voice is the most important voice. You will be empowered to collaborate with your full care team and you are provided a survey opportunity after each visit. We encourage and welcome the feedback and questions from you. It is never a goodbye, but always a see you later, Proactive MD. We will provide ongoing communication and consistent check-ins after your appointment. Our care for you extends far beyond these walls and we can't wait to partner with you in every step of your healthcare journey. So, not sure how to get back to. That's why we have IT. I was going to say, Quinn's actually for here. So, that just kind of shows you um, truly 
Um, that is our patient promise. We are always in, um, always about the patient and we'll always fight for their greatest good. Um, and it truly is because um, we want for that to be their home. And what I've seen um, since I've come on board with Proactive and working with um, the team is the employees here truly use it as their primary care. So it's not just engagement from the employees, it's engagement from their spouses and dependents. And that truly shows that they're using that as their primary care home which is what we truly want. And they can also use it as urgent care. You know, somebody wakes up with a stuffy nose, they can call us, they can get them in the same day. Um, and that's the beauty of this center is you're always gonna be able to uh, get in the same day. Um, you're be able to come in, we're able to do lab draws. From the services we're able to offer, there's a lot that we're able to provide in such a rural area. And I think that's the key thing is not having to drive. Um, you know, being able to get people back to work in a timely manner is key um, and not really having to stay, you know, in a self center, waiting in the weight room, I think we've all been there, um, waiting in a weight room and not really wanting to do that. So, um, broad scope, of course, we do uh, the comprehensive primary care um, service delivery. That's really where I come in. I really want to make sure this is a seamless process. Um, and so I meet with them quarterly um, to go over the numbers and really making sure that we're really engaging the population. And the cool thing is, is um, Last um, August, um, we really did a push for marketing and really making sure that we were engaging the em employees. And so we did, you know, when you guys have your back to school events, um, when you guys have onboarding for orientation, it's really letting people know what this benefit is. And we actually seen um, a pretty significant increase in engagement within the health center. So your employees listen, um, and which is great um, because it's always a struggle if they're not. Um, so that's just something that over the next um, this next year in 2022, continuing to send out surveys to get more feedback because we're always welcome to feedback. Um, can we do better? Is there more services that you guys would like to have offered in the health center? Because um, those are all things that we want to be able to offer to you. And of course, at the end of the day, we always want the return on investment. Um, we want this to be a good investment for um, the corporation as well. <clears throat> and so this is just kind of again um, talks on the basically the benefits of it being here so close. Um, you know, when your employees are healthier, they're going to be more productive at work. They're going to list you know miss um, less sick days, all of that. And so those are all the key benefits. Um, you guys have a sixty five percent overall engagement um, with the health center, which is phenomenal for um, engagement for healthcare. Um, and from a chronic care standpoint, to really drive it back to the um, claims cost, um, that's engaging those chronic conditions. Individuals that may have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, or diabetes, engaging them in the health center, making sure they're compliant with their medications because we do dispense medications over there. Even if you have a primary care doc that you have a relationship with, that's completely fine. Say they order your labs for your annual labs, you can actually take them over, they can send the lab or the request over to us. We can actually do those labs in-house completely free if you're, of course, um, within the health plan. And so there's just different ways that you can still have that relationship with your primary care and still get those things um, offered within the health center. So anything else you want me to add? No, I just want to say this is a great benefit for our staff because, you know, like she said, if you go to the clinic, it does not cost your employees a penny. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's part of their benefit. The, if you get your prescriptions there, it does not cost you a penny. So you're not paying your any co-pays, you're not paying your deductibles or any of that. So it really is a phenomenal opportunity. Some people, as she said, have their primary care, but the doctor wants them to have blood tests. They can run over there and get their lab work done. Yeah. And, and while this clinic is three minutes down the road, they also, um, not all of our employees, myself included, live right here in Petersburg. They have a clinic in Crawfordsville, for example, that my husband and I generally go to because it's the one closest to our house. And um, we have Montezuma too, that a lot of people end up utilizing. Um, and that's the other thing too, kind of just to highlight. Um, the fun piece is, is um, this also allows for people to have that place that if they're not really sure how they're feeling, they can come there and get checked out. So for instance, we had an individual um, within the last, um, this first quarter, came in, was kind of just not feeling well, you know, slight chest pains. Um, they hooked up the EKG machine to him, um, was able to look to see if there was anything majorly wrong. 
realized that there wasn't anything major late that he needed to go to uh, urgent care or the ER. So that was just an avoidance of that ER visit um, at the end of the day. And so we were able to get him taken care of, get him stabilized, and then get him you know, into an appointment with a specialist um, if that was needed. And so I think that's just the you know, benefit of having the, you know, the care team right there. Um, Cause I know, you know, care here is role. And so, you know, having to travel and all of that takes time. So um, we're super excited to be partnered with you guys. Um, I love coming to see them. And uh, yeah, so if you guys have any questions, of course I'm here to anybody have any questions. So is there any way that you would know how much money you've saved our corporation for yeah. where if you we were just hooked up with you guys. Yeah, for sure. Um, so actually, over the last year, um, the return on investment was about 1.47. Um, so roughly saved around thirty-six thousand dollars. And we do our our um, numbers are very very conservative. Um, so for instance, when we're looking at cost savings and how we get that ROI, we're really looking at how many services were we able to divert into the health center. So that's you know services provided there within the health center, labs, medications, just your acute visit, chronic condition, anything of that nature. And then we also look at those chronic condition um, individuals. How many of those people are engaged within our health center? Um, and when we look at that. Um, you know, most times when somebody has high blood pressure, they more than likely have all three, um, but we only see them as a cost savings in one category. So they could have all three, so you could be seeing, seeing savings in all three categories, but we only count them in one. Um, so that's where we see a more conservative um, savings, but you guys did, and that's really good. Um, I did talk to with the broker just to kind of talk over those um, with United Health, and he said that's really good savings for the small group that you guys are. So. Good. And especially separating away from, you guys were um, with the big uh, trust, um, and so staying with, just by yourself, and staying with proactive, you're still seeing quite a bit of savings, um, which is significant. So. Well, the prescriptions alone. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. That and labs, because um, we give those to you guys at cost. Um, and so if they were to go to anywhere else, you're going to see times 10, sometimes times 20 markup mm -hmm. cost. Mm -hmm. um, so they're seeing quite a bit of savings there. Great. And along with that, another savings that's not figured into theirs, our United Healthcare rates are based on how much our corporation costs the insurance. So if, if all of these things that we're doing through Proactive, if we were going and using our UHC at a different provider, that's going to drive up our UHC right. costs as well, which costs more for both the employee and the court. So, so yeah. this is a really plus great claims um, at the end of the day. That's and that's what's going to drive up your you know um, premiums at the end of the day. So. Well, hopefully you'll see more that your percentage yeah. will go way up. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's and it's the communication and the marketing and working with our team to really over the next year, what kind of you know in service days do you guys have to where potentially we can have somebody on site just to answer questions about the services that we offer over there. Um, so anytime that we can be involved, we would love to. Um, I would love to come up um, and see your guys' faces. So yeah, anytime that we can be involved to communicate more that this is a really well benefit um, that you guys offer, we would love to. So, Great, thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. I know I heard I had a um, tough month to follow. The last month I heard it was a great oh, month. You, right? did. Oh, you, you did, did. <laughs> you did, you did. They were awesome. Yeah. <laughs> You had no chance of talking. I know. I had <laughs> Statements from the superintendent. Well, I have a number of things to share with you. First of all, um, we would like to congratulate an alumni, Macy Williams, Williams, who was just drafted into the WNBA. So, you know, that's another <laughs> proud mo moment for the district to see one of our own um, getting that great opportunity. Congratulations to Adam Miller, our ag teacher. I went to announce this last month and then had to zip it because it was still embargoed at that time. But Adam Miller has received the um, Golden Owl. He is up for being the Indiana Ag Teacher of the Year but he is one of the award recipients at this point. Um, he is being honored and recognized with, um, he gets some 
money and a plaque and, you know, we had a nice little cake and all that. But then he also um, is being considered for the Indiana Ag Teacher of the Year. So when you think about the number of ag teachers in the state of Indiana, the fact that he got this initial award, we're pretty proud of him. Um, I would like to give a special thanks to Lindsay. She told you a little bit about that STEM acceleration grant that she got. What she didn't share with you, she did mention it was a competitive grant. Um, there were something like 90 some applications for that grant and there were a very limited number of districts that received the grant. And so thank you and congratulations to her that um, that she was able to secure those funds for our district in, in especially in light of all of the districts across the state that were competing for that money. Um, a uh, big thank you to, they're not here, Cindy and Chelsea, and also to Lindsay. We are currently in the midst of our audit that happens every two years, and they are asking for like a lot of different things. And on top of it, the audit years were the 1920 and the 2021 school years. Um, Chelsea was not in this position for a good chunk of that. Lindsay was not in this position for any of that. I was only in this position for the last half of last year. And Cindy, bless her, um, <laughs> has, has helped us find the things that the auditor's asking for and searching for. And, um, you know, all three of them have just gone above and beyond to try to do that, to make that audit process as smooth as possible. And um, finally, I want to congratulate Kelly. Um, the IPLI graduation was held for her cohort this week, and she has completed that, and we're pleased and proud of her, and it's a great program for our administrators. Um, Josh has just been accepted into the next cohort of that, and Phil's currently through a different program, but the same kind of thing in the midst of it. So it's a great opportunity for our great administrators to get even better because they're learning from their peers across the state that that are newer um, administrators like they are. So congratulations to Kelly. Okay, thank you. Discussion items. All right. Um, well, the first thing I had on was um, Mr. Shavey actually kind of talked about the sixth grade move progress. Um, I did want to share with you, as he said, um, Josh and Phil um, and Rachel and Lindsay and that whole team have been working, working, working on this so that we can be as prepared as possible when we go in in August and and um, have things ready. So he talked about parents would be happier about the kids being together. So they created a map showing where everyone was moving to. The, the junior high wing is going to be the old junior high wing. Um, they've they've um, made a lot of changes there. They met with all of the teachers whether their classroom is moving or not, but Wednesday morning during our PLC time, they had a brief meeting with the staff and um, laid out where everyone was moving, how this would all affect, you know, their planning on how it will look, because in some ways it's kind of like a domino effect. I can't move into your room until you move, and, you know, looking at how that's all going to work. So they're um, working on those. Uh, as he said, our maintenance and custodial staff looking at all the changes that have to happen with this and just everyone has been on board because as Phil said, it's not just a sixth grade transition, it's a district transition and, and there's a lot of moving parts to it. So thank you to all of you for what you're doing and it's just, it's been incredible um, how they're doing it and um, the staffing, as he said, you know, they're looking at how we're best serving students. I'm excited about a lot of the opportunities that our junior high students are going to have 
for some extra classes that they currently um, don't have the opportunity to take. So this is just a really exciting thing. Um, E-learning, I want to mention um, this year we implemented on our snow days, we used some e-learning days. So our flex days, for example, tomorrow, um, our students and staff have the day off because rather than using a flex day on a snow day, we used e-learning. And this is the first year that we have done that. Um, and then legislation just changed a little and has tweaked that. As of the next school year, um, districts are allowed to only use three e-learning days if they are asynchronous, which means <coughs> kids just get on their devices and do their stuff, you know, that their teachers have put in there for them to work on. Um, you can have more. There's a waiver process and there's also a way to hold e-learning days if they're synchronous, which if you think of a Zoom meeting when the teacher and the students are all in there together, you can do some of that. In our school calendar for next year that you've approved, we did put in an e-learning day in the spring so that, and it would be an asynchronous one when the students are working on their things so that we can have a professional learning day. I'm still, I don't think we should change that. I think that's really important that we do that. So that means we could only have two e-learning days if they're like we did them this year and then any other day of a snow day would have to, we'd have to use our flex days. We can also look at between now and then um, how we might do those days synchronous if we chose to do them. But I just want you to be aware and I want the community to be aware because I know last year at this time we surveyed a lot of people to see and, and overwhelmingly people wanted us to start using e-learning instead of our flex days if possible. And, you know, it was great this year, but, you know, it might not be the same next year. Um, there, I want you to consider, I'm not putting this for you to vote, but I just want to make you aware um, that it's been, we need to do some painting in our gymnasium, our auxiliary gym, and the pool area for different reasons. But it doesn't come without a cost. And um, the, the swimming pool area, for example, if we did this painting now, and I know that the FAST program spoke to you last summer, and they already reached out and met with Jason and Brian last week and want to know why we haven't painted that area. They really want the pool painted. The cost for that is $23,925. And if we do that, um, the problem with that, not unlike the lights we just talked about, until that ceiling and we figure out what's happening with the roof up there and all of that, if we spend the $24,000 to paint that, um, a lot of the problems that we're still having and the are going to keep happening and then we're going to have to repaint it again after we get the ceiling and roof. But I also know that the FAST program approached you last year and I don't know if they've approached you again this year, but I do know that they've approached, as I said, they met with Jason and Brian. So I want you to know that's a $24,000 price tag if we decide to paint that now, knowing that. Is that for the walls, ceiling and all? This is the walls because we have that drop ceiling or whatever that's in there right now. Um, so, so yeah, um, be thinking about that and you can decide next month if you want to do that. Um, the main gymnasium, um, we have talked about since I came here, um, the need to get the the community's desire to have a Mustang back on the wall yeah. and um, and that the gymnasium certainly needs painted as well and if we're looking at doing the Mustang it kind of makes more sense to paint the whole gym and then look at doing a Mustang mural at that time. Um, Perfection Painting, the same group that came out and gave me that estimate to paint that gym in there would be $17,595. Um, 
Um, and 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 it kind of if you go in like it's getting pretty dingy and and um, using a little brighter color um, could help brighten up that area. And as we're putting in all the new lights that you just approved to make it brighter in there, um, now would be a really good time to paint it because those bright lights are really going to show how much it needs painted. <laughs> right. Yep. And um, then also we got a cost for painting the auxiliary gym. We're getting a new scoreboard in there that's a different size than what we have. If we don't paint it, you're going to see exactly where the old scoreboard was because the new one's a little bit smaller. Um, the estimate for painting in there would be $18,345. Um, Higher than the other one? Yeah, Is it crazy. bigger? That's a little surprising. Um, well, when you get these, it, it talks about what they would do on it, but it has to do with um, the different things that they have to move or paint around and or remove and reinstall and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, I'm not, it is about $400, or about, well, actually about a thousand, a little less than a thousand. A little less than a thousand more. Um, but anyway, but I want you to think about that because if we do one, two, or all three, some of those funds, um, you know, every year we have um, building improvement funds and things that can help pay for some of this. But we also know that we have very old HVAC equipment. We have a lot of other things that you can't always count for that come up. So just keep in mind when we when this is before you, if we decide to do one or two or all three, um, our plans right now is to use the, if we do it, the funds that we have for facility maintenance, but with all the other things that we know that you know, we play whack-a-mole with a little bit sometimes. We could get into a point where we're having to hit rainy day funds for some of this. <clears throat> now, the rainy day funds, where does it come from? The years that we didn't use some of our building funds. So it really is funds that were for some of these over the years. So I want you just to keep that in mind as you think about it. And I, and I wanted to put it in the discussion so you had time to mull it over and think about how that rainy day fund, and maybe we won't even have to access it, but um, we may hit that, be especially we don't know what enrollment's going to be in the fall and how that's going to affect what we are planning. What about the pool roof, or not the roof, but the ceiling? I mean, did we just, I know we've talked about that, but did we ever get an estimate to get that down? Um, no, well, other than the rough estimate that we got during our work session from performance <clears throat> services mm -hmm. um you know because at that time all of that stuff we were kind of looking at the next time we're up for a bond mm -hmm. but if the board would like us to look into doing that sooner rather than later well wasn't we that one of our major issues was see, was with all the moisture yeah. and stuff so i mean if we got rid of the the ceiling and then painted that I mean, it yeah, because be just we down talked about beach. leaving it exposed, yeah, exposed. And having which most of them are. But mm -hmm. but we can um, get more of an estimate if you want to do that now and not wait for the bond. We I would say get an it. estimate so we can see. Yeah, exactly. So we can make a, mm -hmm. a better educated decision about it. Because I'm like you, it's it's like the the lights. I mean, you paint it, and then we still have issues, and it ruins the paint. But. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and then um, the last discussion item that I want to share with you are some policy additions or changes that I want to share with you right now and then I'll bring um, more formal next month for you to look at. But specifically, we have technology policies right now in place. Um, I think we need to make some revisions for some of that because, um, for example, if if people refuse to sign the technology agreement, we're still giving the devices 
Sometimes we make them keep the devices here at school and use them, but we have to look at what that acceptable use policy is and how it's functioned. Also, right now, if devices are destroyed or broken, um, many of our families are good about paying the cost for that, but there are some other options. Um, you know, many districts have an insurance type program where you, you know, and it's opt-in, certainly no one's made to do that, um, but they can pay a small fee up front, and then if my child drops and breaks their device, then the first time it only costs me X amount of dollars. Now, if the same thing happens again, you know, the second time it might be a little more of a copay, but still, it saves me from having to pay for a whole new screen for my child's device, that kind of thing we want to add in there. Um, so I'm going to be bringing that to you. Quinn and Tab Hoagland have worked. Do other schools do that type of thing with an insurance yes. on the devices? Yeah. We just yeah, never have because schools we rushed have. into the one-on-one -on -one kind of sort of because we had to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we probably... We're yeah. still learning as we go. Right, right. So I'm saying it was, wasn't planned to do it that year. We were forced right. into right. it. Right. Right. Um, another policy that... I'm going to bring before you is a student engagement policy. Um, it has to do with our ADM count and um, a policy guaranteeing that that we are how we track who's in here when we collect the um, proof of residencies and things like that. We have some procedures in the district. But again, it's about tightening up. Some of those procedures that we have really need to be board policies. So um, because they align with Indiana code then. And right now, even though we're doing some of the things, we're not totally in alignment because it's not in our policy manual. And along with that same thing, um, cost principles about how we spend federal funds, whether that's our food service dollars, our um, title, one funds or our special ed funding or things like that. Um, we have a lot of procedures in place that are really good procedures and and good controls and checks on it. But still, um, we need to have a more formal policy in our policy manual. So I'm going to be bringing that to you because that's part of, you know, my role, as you know, each year is looking at those, not only making revisions to the existing policies, but then suggesting to the board other policies that might need to be adopted sooner rather than later. <laughs> so, any questions about any of that? Then I have one last thing. Um, last month we did have a very delightful group for our spotlight <laughs> and um, and at that meeting, you voted that you would approve their field trip to um, Indiana Beach. <laughs> and they made a lovely thank you note <laughs> featuring shirts with Mr. Hall's face on them. All different, if you notice, yeah. I'll pass it down. Every shirt has a different face of Mr. Hall. It is signed by all of those students who presented to you last year. That's cute. And um, I just, you know, thought that would be a great way to end this meeting <laughs> is by and didn't thank um, you from this group. And yes, yes. thank you. Uh, yeah. New Course Deal did make a sizable donation, and um, and Mr. Minnick did get to come over and do that. It happened to be on <laughs> April 1st, so yep. many of the kids mm -hmm. thought it was an April Fool's prank. Um, oh. when, <laughs> but we assured them that no. Um, yeah, we had to had really, really, it's really good. Did make we had to reassure them it was not a prank. <laughs> but yes, it was. Um, so thank they you. Were, for they were really dialed into April Fool's Day, weren't they? Oh, they were. They absolutely. I thought so. Yeah. Um, I Mr. heard Shady, some stories. I think had a few uh -huh. yeah. hundred <laughs> post-it <laughs> notes. <laughs> oh, was yes. that your office? I saw. They spent yeah. a little time being nervous about what uh, repercussions might come. Like who was going to prank them back? Yeah. <laughs> they, they, um, the same group that presented to us had a lot of pranks that day. Um, <laughs> 
Mrs. Hammond got a pan of brownies. It was literally a pan with brown letter E's cut out <laughs> all over, so she had brownies. That's but, cute. Yeah, they did all kinds of fun pranks <laughs> that day. But I think um, Mr. Shavy was probably their favorite was <laughs> recipient. It, I, when I brought that in, it was that was one of the most rewarding moments of my life was those kids' reaction. Oh, yeah. I mean, they, they were very excited. Sure. Very, very excited. So that's all I got. Okay. Statements, concerns of the board? I got to tell you, I thank you guys. You guys are all working really hard on getting this sixth grade set up, on getting the, um, um, the new... Um, I can't think of the term now, the K through five program set up in your school. And, you know, I, I just, I think you guys are doing great and I thank you for it. I really do. Yeah, I want to say thanks to, to Jason for the time he spent doing the girls basketball. Um, I'm not sure he was looking forward to that when it first happened, uh, coming from a boys program to a girls. Um, I know Josh and I can attest that coaching girls basketball is a little bit different, um, but, but I want to thank him for doing that. Um, and, and I think uh, I'm going to welcome Mr. Carr to come. I, I've not met him, but I've read a lot of stuff about him. He seemed like he was very well liked at North Vermillion, and, and um, so I, I'm, I'm looking forward to meeting him and seeing what he can do for us. Um, Mr. Shaby, I, I don't remember if I said this, but um, the play, his part in the play was one of my favorite parts. It was, he did an absolutely amazing job, so I'm kind of looking forward to the karaoke. Thing. So, oh, bring your it, money. It was, I'm going to, I'm going I'm I'm to go to the ATM before I come. It was very enjoyable. The kids did a really good job on the play, and, and, from what I heard, Mr. Shea was kind of a small part, but it, it was a lot more than a small part. It was it was it was very good. So, so they did something different. That, yeah, I was there the very last every, one. Every so day I came back. I said, let's change this a little bit and do you know. It was the best at the last night or yeah, the last afternoon. But that's when I came. It was a lot of fun. And it, it, I just had a great time doing it with the kids. You can tell you were having fun. fun. Well, was, I hate that I'm going to miss the 27th. I won't be in town, but um, for the um, for the 22nd. Yeah. Oh no, that's oh no, that, that's for the oh I'll be there for that. I'll be there for that. So that's good. And I forgot to tell you, you do an awesome job, and we're so glad to have you over here. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, and Mr. Wolf uh, does a great job with the family night stuff, and mm -hmm. and uh, I know he's he he wrapped up Mr. Webb and Mr. Kite into a little video thing that they put on Facebook that was pretty pretty fun. <laughs> um, looking forward to that, and it, and then I'll add on to what Crystal said. Thanks to the the whole administration and mm -hmm. and staff and and central office for you know. We're, we're going through two major things this year, moving the sixth grade and, and now because of force of nature outside of our hands and controls, we're going to bring that um, other program in. So I know that's a huge change for, like like you said, Mr. Shavey, not just a building or the school, but the whole, you know, the whole school corporation as a whole. Um, I'm looking forward to it because I think we have the right people in the right places to make this succeed, and, and we thank you guys for that. And that includes Dr. Grimes. So. Yes. You guys said it all. Second. Second. <laughs> so document signing we've done. So call for adjournment at 7:43. Motion. Second. All in favor.